All right, so uh, thanks for asking the question, Sean. Really appreciate it, great question. So we have this area here with an electric field. I've shown it with these dashed uh, orange arrows and the electric field is going down. So the electric field is negative 120 newtons per coulomb y hat. And into this electric field, this electron is gonna be shot in. And the electron is shot in from a spot right here that it enters the electric field. I'm gonna call that spot right there, zero, zero. Okay, zero meters x hat, zero meters y hat. That's where it enters the electric field. And when it enters the electric field right there, it has a initial y velocity that's zero and an initial x velocity that's 3.0 times 10 to the six meters per second x hat. This x velocity will not change. It will be the x velocity for the electron during the entire motion, simply because there are no forces acting in the x direction. All forces are in the y direction being caused by the electric field. So I need to find the force on the electron. And the force on the electron is caused by electricity. So the force on the electron will be force electric, which is equal to the charge it has times the electric field. So I plug in the charge on the electron, I charge in the electric field, and I get a force of positive 1.92 times 10 to the 17 newtons y hat. The electron is being pushed upwards, which makes sense because it would be repelled from the bottom negative plate and attracted by the top positive plate. So that's perfect. As I mentioned a few moments ago, there is no acceleration in the x direction. I told you the x velocity does not change. The y acceleration component is F net y over m, but the only force acting on it is the electric force. So net force y direction becomes the electric force, and we divide by the mass of the electron. When we do that, we put in the electric force that I just calculated. See, I put that in there. Put in the mass of the electron. I get an acceleration in the y direction of positive 2.1 times 10 to the 13 meters per second y hat. Now that we've done that, we now that we know the acceleration here, y, it's like knowing g of negative 9.8 meters per second squared when we were doing a projectile motion question, except our acceleration isn't g, it's this, but it's a projectile motion question. So if they've given us the velocity in the x direction and they've given us how long the, the distance is from one end of the plate to the other, look, from one end of the plate to the other, it's 0 0.04 meters. I can find out what the X final position and the Y final position will be by knowing that the X final position is simply the length of the plate. I know X final. It's the length of the plate, okay? So I put in the length of the plate in here when I rearrange this equation, like velocity x direction delta x over delta t, right? But but delta x is x final because it started at zero, right? Delta x is x final, it started at zero. I rearrange this equation right here to solve for t. So the x final is the length of the plate, positive 0 0.04 meters x hat, those four centimeters we talked about. How fast is it moving in the x direction? That is known. So we can calculate that it takes 1.3 times 10 to the eight seconds, and that's a short amount of time to get through here. And this has happened so many times when we've been doing a projectile motion problem, right? We use the X component to find the time. And time is very powerful because time within the X component motion is also time within the Y component motion. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna use the time that applies also to the Y component, and we're gonna use the Y component acceleration. Oopsie, did you see the mistake I made there? This is acceleration, I better put a squared there. And I'm gonna use that to find all of the questions A, B, and C that they were asked. Now, the first question they asked is, what's its deflection? How high up did it move from its initial Y position, which was zero, by the time it got to the end of the plate? So they want us to calculate delta Y. All right, and now I'm gonna use this equation right here. What's really interesting about this equation right here is initial velocity y, L zippo, this whole term disappears. Now, I know acceleration in the y direction, bingo, bango. I know the time, put that in there. And since it started at y equals zero, delta y becomes y final because the y initial was zero. So here's my simplified equation. I plug in all the numbers and bingo, bango. That's how far it's moved from a Y position of zero after that amount of time, just a minuscule amount. But for an electron, it's a long distance. Next, B, 
What is the final velocity y? Well, I'm going to use this equation right here. And I'm remembering that initial velocity y component is 0. Boom. So all I need to do is multiply the acceleration in the y direction by how much time it's moving for. Multiply those two together. Plug in. Bingo, bango. There's my answer. 4. Ooh, I'm getting sloppy today on this Saturday uh, evening. There. There's my y velocity. Okay. Now, the next question they're asking for the deflection angle. At what angle is it leaving the parallel plates? At what angle is it leaving the electric field? Well, I can figure that out by drawing the triangle of the final velocity. Here's the final velocity. Here's its x component. Here's its y component. And theta is that angle of deflection. Well, this is very easy because theta will be the tan inverse of the magnitude of the final y component velocity, which we just calculated, dingo bango, there it is, all over velocity x, which we knew from the beginning. So just do the tan inverse of this. All we're interested in is magnitudes here, and you'll get that angle. And I know you can do uh, tan inverse. You're a very intelligent young man. So I hope this helped, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.